This illustrates the basic Git commands for using Git to interact with GitHub repositories. Here we have some strangers repository in GitHub which we have no right to edit. But if you fork it into your own GitHub account, you would then have rights to change it. To work with repositories on your local machine, install a Git client. Its installation includes adding in your user home folder a .git folder containing a config file. That file stores git global commands such as username and user ID settings for attribution. Git commands are typed into a terminal shell window on a Mac or a run window on Windows. Most IDEs incorporate commonly used git client functionality into their software. I recommend that you create an account folder to hold all your various repositories. Be in that folder when you clone a repositories from GitHub. Git then creates that repos folder and within it a folder named .git to hold objects that track changes to the repository. During cloning, Git automatically extracts files from objects out to the repositories folder, as if you typed a git checkout of the default branch. Now we cd into the repository folder. The git branch command shows us all the branches held in the repository. Git defaults to the master branch. But many organizations protect that name for production use and instead create a development or dev branch for developers to work with. The git checkout command controls what git extracts out from the repository database to the repository's folder. The dash B specifies creation of a new branch, such as future one, to associate new changes. Now we can edit the file named readme.md. The MD designates markdown format. Such a file GitHub creates with this specific name to describe each repository. We can use Vim or another text editor, such as nano, item, etc., to change the contents inside files. Batch files would echo text to the bottom of the file. The git status command details the status of changes to the repo. You can change several files, but only the files you add to git staging area will be pushed to GitHub. The dot selects all files changed. The dash capital A parameter specifies that deleted files be processed. But many prefer to specifically add individual files to go into each particular commit, which works on all files added to staging. The commit supplies a message describing changes, which applies to all files added. The git log command provides a history of commits. It has lots of options, so to avoid typing all the parameters desired, most people define an alias of the command in git's config file. Git ref log lists actions that have occurred on the local machine. Before pushing to GitHub, some prefer to rebase to squash some commits so that only one commit message appear for several commits made. The git push command sends to a remote what has been committed for a specific branch. You would get an error if you don't paste your public key into GitHub. Because branches are just markers within Git, once a feature branch is in GitHub, that branch can be deleted from the local repo and from GitHub by specifying that colon in front of the branch name. Unless you have been designated a committer in the upstream repository, you can't push changes to it. But you can request your committers to pull changes from your forked repo. When a committer of that repo merges in, or in other words accepts your PR, you get an email from GitHub. Now let's take a look at what happens if over time changes occur in the upstream repo. The git remote verification command tells us that the origin remote was created as usual with the repo. To enable download by git, we add the upstream remote. To obtain changes locally, many would rather not issue a git pull upstream command, which blindly fetches and automatically merges changes. Differences in the same line within the same file forces git into automatic conflict resolution mode. So, many prefer to take it one step at a time. First a git fetch upstream, then a git checkout master. Now we can use a utility such as git k to see what changes came in. If they don't affect you, do a git merge. Notice the slash operator. Then use cat or less command to verify file contents. Lastly, we git push to update origin master on our forked repository. 